Good evening and welcome to the Ombudsman program. My name is Diane Wellborn. I am the Ombudsman and I'm going to be co-hosting this show this evening with my colleague Monica Wynn, the Long-Term Care Ombudsman program director. Our topic this evening is on community supports for senior citizens and we are very pleased to have with us this evening two ladies that have a wealth of information and a lot of expertise on this topic. So I'd like to begin by introducing Vicki Carraher and she is the Senior Service Coordinator for the City of Dayton. Then we also are pleased to have with us tonight Fatima Bushemi, who is the day is with the Day Air Credit Union, and you are there as in what position, please, Fatima? I'm the business development manager. B business development manager, fantastic. So we are uh, we want to recognize that Kettering is a city in our community that has a devoted staff person to helping uh, to helping seniors, and we also want to touch on the role of. Um, financial assistance uh, for seniors and protections for seniors um, uh, financially in our community and these guests are going to help us get a lot of those questions answered. I'd also like to remind the viewers that this is a call-in program so if you are a senior, if you know a senior or if you're related to a senior <laughs> and you have a question uh, we welcome you to call the number on the screen and we will do our very best to get your questions answered. So um, uh, without any further ado, I think we're just going to jump uh, jump right in. We're going to start by asking you, Fatima, to tell us a little bit about our collaborative here in Montgomery County. In 2010, a collaborative was made, we, the acronym of CANE. It's the Collaboration Against Abuse, Neglect and Exploitation. Uh, it's a multidisciplinary team that includes many members, actually 60 members throughout the community who come together who work with seniors. Um, we established this because it's so important to get awareness out about financial exploitation, uh, elder abuse, and neglect. Right, definitely. Uh, I think we do have to comment that it is uh, frequently our seniors that do have a lot of assets, mm -hmm. um, financial assets, because they've spent their lives building those up, which also unfortunately makes them targets, doesn't it? Absolutely. Um, you know, that, that is the thing, that people have worked so hard to make a nice retirement for themselves, and um, often they are targeted. Uh, of course, in this day and age, we're all targets for financial exploitation, but in particular, our seniors. Right, right. And uh, how long has the collaborative been meeting? We've been meeting monthly for uh, almost five years now, four and a half years. And it's a multidisciplinary team, which is becoming increasingly more used, which with such technical topics like elder abuse. Um, the really neat thing about the collaborative is that we have found that organizations are starting to work closer together because they have a face and a name um, and then we can bring up issues that are affecting all of us. That's, that's wonderful. Does the, um, does the collaborative uh, then have, um, have particular presentations or topics and subcommittees that w do this work as well? We do. We yeah. have an education committee, an advocacy committee. Um, and we've had a couple different committees that have come and gone. Everything seems to fall under education, though, mm -hmm. because the awareness in the community is so important. Um, so the special events are planned by the education committee. We actually also have, uh, in the past, done a lot of case studies where professionals can come together and talk about a particularly difficult case mm -hmm. that they can't really get all the answers for, and then they can work together um, to make something happen for that senior. Right. I would imagine that in some of those types of cases, the issue might touch a number of the disciplines that are around the table. So that's probably very helpful to, to have that type of approach. Talk a little bit about the role of day air and how you, you as a staff person at day air, got connected to the cane. How'd you get involved? Well, day air credit union's mission is to improve the financial well-being of our members but we extend that out into the community. So financial education is a big part of my job. And I was actually friends with Vicki Carher uh, from the city of Kettering because we're both located in Kettering and I have a passion for seniors myself. Um, so when I 
was invited to this group and actually attended one of our first symposiums. We've done a couple symposiums. Um, and just said, wow, this is just a perfect synergy. Because no matter what is happening with any of us in our lives, your financial situation is extremely, direly important. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and so there was a natural fit. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. That's really very exciting. How have you all, through the cane, been able to conduct some of your financial in, in, uh, education? Is it targeted toward individuals? Is it targeted toward other institutions? Is it both and all? <laughs> <laughs> well, a little bit of everything. So some of the things that Kane in and of itself has, has done throughout the uh, community for the last five years, we've put on a couple symposiums which have been aimed towards professionals mostly um, and reach out to the general public. Uh, about awareness, and I'll tell you a little bit about what we did this past year, but also financial education throughout financial institutions. As a matter of fact, we were able a couple years ago to, um, to do some educational pieces in different credit unions and not only give signs of financial distress, uh, but actually just elder abuse as well. We did it in conjunction with Adult Protective Services. Okay, good, that, that's I mean, wonderful. Well now, Vicki, I'm going to uh, ask you to talk a little bit mm -hmm. about uh, your unique office mm -hmm. and how it came to be in the city of Kettering. Uh, we actually have had an elderly task force for about 15 years in the city of Kettering. It was first started by Peggy Lehner, who was a city councilwoman who is now a senator, a state senator. Uh, she was going around asking individuals, going door to door, talking to voters, finding out what the issues were. And she ran into so many seniors, and those seniors' number one thing is, well, we don't know where to go. We, we have all these needs, and we maybe can find a home, and what do we do with this? So the Elderly Task Force brought together individuals from every department in the city of Kettering, and they work together on elder issues. We are a older community. We have quite a few seniors who do live in Kettering, and they're aging in place. They want to stay in the home. They don't want to have to go to a nursing home or assisted living. They want the services that they need to be delivered directly to their home. And so our job as a city is to determine what our seniors need and what the city can do to fill the gaps in what they need. So out of the elderly task force came the notion that we really need somebody who can help seniors on a regular basis and the full-time position became available uh, back uh, about 10 years ago. And so our first senior service coordinator, Deb Childress, worked uh, in the position for several years and then um, after she left and moved on to another position, I assumed the position back in 2008. So we have been very blessed. The city council, the mayor, all of the administration and the staff in the city have been very supportive of not only having the task force work on elder issues, but having my position. So anytime an elderly person or their family members need something or they have, let's say they have an issue with the fire department or they have an issue with trash collection, um, I can then go and work with the city department to make sure that that person gets the services that they need in the best way that they can. All right, that's wonderful. Does the elderly task force still exist? Yes, You it still does. have a task force. We still have a task force that works on several different issues. We have representatives from police and fire. We actually have individuals from the engineering department. As we were uh, working on new roadways and new buildings in the city, the engineering department would say, you know, how can we make these buildings more senior friendly? And uh, as we renovated one of our parks, we were able to make sure that one of our parks was wheelchair accessible through the entire park. So um, we've been very uh, blessed to have everyone in the city buy into the serving seniors. That's lovely. Um, how large is the task force currently? The task force is about 15 people okay. currently. And um, some departments have a heavier presence than others. Obviously the police and fire department who meet with seniors on a regular basis have a couple of representatives. But we have representatives from city council, the city manager, the assistant city manager all serve on the task force. 
and we are able to you know then have the backing of the city manager because if you want to get something done in the city it's good to have the the city manager on board with you so absolutely do you have some citizens on the task force as well we have brought citizens in from time to time it is what we do to internally work on senior issues we will bring seniors into the task force um, we have had them consult with different projects um, but we currently just utilize city staff in order to make sure that we can discuss certain issues that may not be um, issues that the public is ready to address yet. Right, right. Can you, um, can you share with us what are some of the kind of top concerns right now, either for the task force or for the seniors you're serving? What are some of the things that are highest on, on the list? Um, home care mainly. Okay. Not so much medical home care, but home care. I need, I can stay in my home as long as I don't cook because I may have fires if I cook. So how can I stay in my home without having to cook? And that may be as simple as having Meals on Wheels delivered or having a family member put together, you know, once a week, put together all the meals for the week and put them in the refrigerator with instructions on how to microwave them. Um, it could be an individual who can no longer um, shovel their snow or cut their grass. We've probably had a lot of the snow <laughs> yeah, recently. A lot of the snow. Yeah. <laughs> so we work. We have worked with the um, the honor society from Kettering Fairmont High School to provide individuals within the neighborhoods who can help senior shovel snow. Um, we have been able to help individuals just find specific situations. They'll come to me and say, "This is what I can't do, and how do I fix that?" so I can stay in my home. So a, a lot of times it is housekeeping, laundry. You may have a laundry, a laundry that's in the basement. You can't get up, up and down the basement stairs anymore. What are you gonna do to get the laundry done? And so we're able to get non-medical home care in there. We work very closely with the Area Agency on Aging, some of the programs that they run to provide services in the home. And so we get lots of different things that come across the desk. And so our job is for people to come and ask and, and say, this is what I need. And then we can write them up a to-do list. Here's where you go for this. You know, you may want to think about this in the future. I see. Do you find yourself, um, when you're making up that to-do list, do you find that you have one, one or two to-do list that you're giving out more frequently than others? Is that usually it? it's the home care it's home, issue. It's, the home it's care usually stuff. the home care issue. Or it, a lot of times we have, transportation is a okay. huge issue. Yes. Okay. And we have been blessed to have a, a rather large transportation program run through our senior center. And uh, we're able to meet the transportation needs of individuals going to doctor's appointments. And we don't even, you don't have to be going to the doctor's appointment. For a lot of senior ladies, getting your hair done once a week of course. is extremely important. And so we, uh, an individual can go anywhere inside of the city of Kettering for any reason with our transportation program. Okay. So if you tell need to go to the bank, we can take you to the bank. Tell us a little bit more about how that actually works for somebody that, that may be watching and thinks that they might want to use that service. Do they call your office? Do they call the Senior Center? Usually they'll call the Senior Center okay. and that number is 296-2480. Okay. And, or they can call my office. Um, there is a registration process they would register and then they purchase a writer card and the writer card has a specific denomination of money on it so you can buy a twenty dollar card a forty dollar card and then our drivers don't have to carry cash with them they just punch out the card as you use it and it's nice for an individual some individuals say i don't want to drive in the winter time so i'm only going to use transportation in the winter time so i want a forty dollar card to get me through the winter right. Um, and then I will have individuals who, you know, they'll buy a $10 card because they may not need transportation on a regular basis. They may have a family member who does that for them. And how does the card, and is it a, a, a dollar per ride? Is it, how is it's that cost? It's $3. Okay. It's $3 charge. 
and um, we do go outside the city of Kettering in a limited area. The outside the city of Kettering appointments are more related to medical appointments. Uh, we will take people to the VA because many of our veterans live in Kettering and they need to go to the VA for their health care. Uh, so we have a, a limited service area outside. We go into Greene County and throughout Montgomery County. I see. Do um, you have any idea how many of your citizens are using that service and we, annually or monthly, however you I, I do. It? I do not have the numbers okay, on that. Right. Um, I do know that we have um, two drivers Monday through Friday full time, 8 to 4.30. Well, that's great. And so we utilize individuals and we have group trips. Okay. So if you're going to the grocery store, we may pick up five people who are going to the same grocery store. I see. And so we utilize group trips as much as possible because gas is getting really expensive. Carpooling is economical. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, I've been told that we have a caller, so okay. I'm going to now turn attention to uh, our caller that has a question. Uh, thank you for calling. You're on the air, please. Yes, thank you for this wonderful uh, program. It's uh, encouraging to know that so many services are available to help seniors. Uh, as a person who will be a senior in a few years, I'm grateful to know this. I uh, had two questions. Uh, first, uh, recently I was involved in a traffic accident in downtown today, and the driver of the other car was a very elderly lady who was driving herself to the doctor, uh, even though she could only walk with the assistance of walking. And I felt so sorry for her, uh, but she was a danger to other motorists. Uh, so my question, first of all, is how do you get the word out? How do you contact seniors and help them understand that they don't have to risk their lives and the lives of others because transportation is available? And the second question, uh, a while ago I discovered that an elderly neighbor of mine was being preyed upon by uh, organizations that were soliciting uh, contributions at a very high level. Uh, thousands of dollars were going to political and religious organizations, and I wasn't sure what to do in order to uh, be of some assistance to my neighbor, even though I could see that it was hurting her financially. Thank you very much for those uh, very great questions. We will get them answered for you. And if I can recap, I think there's one question there for each of you. <laughs> um, in the first question, the caller relayed that he was in a traffic accident with a lady who was driving and when the a accident happened, she got out of the car and was using a walker and mm -hmm. it, it, it was a sad situation. So mm -hmm. he wants to know how do people get in touch with this driving service so mm -hmm. that people who maybe shouldn't be behind the wheel are not and mm -hmm. can be safer than mm -hmm. what that, that lady was uh, in the situation to be. And then I think the second part of the question has to do with um, uh, those that want to, um, you know, have seniors part with their money and get contributions either for, um, for activities to save the world or save whatever the, the, the group is trying to save, um, and how can, can seniors be uh, protected from, I guess what he meant was either through the mail or phone scams, uh, one, you know, one or the other, where where it's not it's not an honest organization calling right. to try to you know get bona fide contributions, but yet somebody that's trying to to scam. So, would you like to take the first part, and then we'll return to <laughs> sure. that? Yes. Uh, most of the transportation that are run in cities throughout the Dayton area are run through their senior center. So contacting your local senior center and finding out how their transportation works. Uh, some cities have larger transportation programs than others. Uh, individuals who are unable to access a transportation program through their city might want to consider either RTA. Um, RTA offers travel training for individuals who do not know how to use public transportation. So an individual who may be leery 
or reticent to say, I, I don't know that I want to get on a bus, they can get travel training and they send out a bus, an actual bus, and teach the individual how to make connections, how to ride the bus, how to signal the bus driver, and you are able to use that travel training until you're comfortable with being able to travel by yourself. If you're an individual who can't access a regular RTA bus, there's Project Mobility in Montgomery County. Project Mobility allows an individual who could possibly use transportation on a bus but can't access it because they're physically unable to. Not because they don't want to, but because they're physically unable to. You would apply with Project Mobility. Project Mobility would set up an appointment for you to go to their assessment center. You go through an assessment and an individual will be told at the assessment you either qualify for services or you don't. And sometimes services can be, you can utilize, for example, all of uh, fixed route buses have lifts and ramps. But so individuals during nice weather who may be in a wheelchair can get to their bus and use it using the lift or ramp. But let's say there's piles and piles of snow, which we have you know, seen recently, and you can't get your wheelchair through the snow. You might be able to use Project Mobility during those times and then go back to using RTA's fixed route service during other times. So they'll be able to tell you exactly how and when you can use Project Mobility at your assessment. Right, and if you are a resident of Kettering, you can contact that senior you can center as cent well. that you were describing yes, for us earlier. Yes, you can contact our senior center at 296-2480, and um, we can make sure individuals who can't get out of the house because they don't have transportation can actually use a credit card over the phone, or I even go out to the home on a home visit. I will take your registration and take your money to the senior center, turn it in for you, bring you back your card, and bring you back a receipt for your registration. Good, wonderful service, Vicki, thank you. Well, it just so happens that I have an exact, uh, very similar situation that happened at the credit union as to what the caller had described oh. about an elder person being targeted by not real charities, maybe, uh, whether they were real or not in that case. We had a gentleman who came in <clears throat> and he was having difficulty with his checking account and going overdrawn, and this was a gentleman that never had that issue before. Come to find out, he was writing checks to organizations that got him on a mailing list mm -hmm. and sent him check, you know, requests. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons that our seniors are vulnerable, we don't want to say no. They don't want to say no most seniors. Uh, they feel like it's a duty to be helpful. And so the way that we were able to convince him that it was not a good idea to send money to these charities, we're, we pulled up the Better Business Bureau on each of the charities. And it was something more like, if it was supposed to be American Heart Association, it was the Association of American Heart. Or, you know, they just kind of mixed up the names so that it was very confusing for him. Uh, so we were able to help him figure out what charities do you really want to donate to. Um, so the Better Business Bureau is a great place to go and look. If you ever have concern about an individual, so if somebody's actually coming to their door, you know, the best thing to do is call the police. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have a real concern that somebody's going to upset him. And then Adult Protective Services will come out and do a wellness check and you can uh, call in and actually report that anonymously. Um, if you're not comfortable approaching the senior yourself to try to help. Okay. And uh, so if they're, um, the, the senior in the case that you described was not really, um, he wasn't sure where his problem lay and he had the wherewithal to come to you and to ask for help because he trusted you with right. that. Uh, but for mm. those that might be watching the program, if they are a relative uh, of, of somebody that might become entrapped by this type of thing, how would you suggest that they help their senior approach the problem? And I'll answer that in two ways. One, the Better Business Bureau is great proof to say this isn't a real charity, Mom, mm -hmm. okay. and we shouldn't be sending them money. But secondly, often we know that our children won't listen to parents, and sometimes parents won't listen to their children. So if you have a trusted financial advisor 
that the parent trusts, the, the older senior trusts, that it's a great way to go into your credit union or your bank and have them talk with somebody who might be able to convince them. That's a very that's good suggestion. Scary. That's good. Thank you very much. Um, well, that kind of works us right into the financial exploitation. Do you and want I think to? we have a call. Oh, I see, I see that we do. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Monica, for yeah. monitoring. All right. We understand we have a caller. You're on the air. Good evening, and thank you for your program. Uh, I want to say my grandmother uh, lived by her son, um, and I'm wondering in the cold months, I think is is on the way now, but uh, for these cold months, I'm wondering what services and programs there, there are to assist old people who uh, live on their own. I'm, I'm going to have to ask you to repeat. We have a little trouble on the line hearing you. Can you repeat your question? Uh, yes. I'm sure what services there are for okay. old folks who live alone. Asking, uh, thank you very much. We'll get this answered. He was asking about services available. Mm -hmm. So that's a broad, good spectrum <laughs> for us to, to answer. You've mm -hmm. talked about transportation mm -hmm. a lot, but maybe you can say a little bit more about the other services that you provide and then maybe some from the uh, financial end as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I also, we also provide in the city of Kettering uh, Medicare and Medicaid counseling, okay. applications, uh, appeals help uh, we are advocates with the city departments and with other departments whether it be a Medicaid application at the job center somebody may have a problem with a uh, food assistance an individual who can no longer afford food and they need the supplemental nutrition assistance program which used to be called food stamps now it's called we call them snap benefits mm -hmm. and so we help individuals with that we work with lots of local businesses. We have fall prevention programs. The city also has a grant and home loan program. We have a grant for handicap accessibility. So let's say you're new to a wheelchair and maybe you need a ramp outside or you need to have your doorways widened in order to fit your equipment that you're currently having to use. We can provide a grant for individuals who income qualify to provide those services and help them stay at home. We also have a loan program. So let's say it's January and it's freezing and your, your furnace goes out and you don't have the money for a new furnace. And you really don't wanna take out a home equity loan or you don't want or can't get a home equity loan. We can help an individual by giving them a loan that doesn't have to be paid back until they sell their home and it can be low or no interest depending on their income that would provide that emergency home loan. We have a smoke detector grant program where we provide hardwired smoke detectors for your home. We also have our fire prevention bureau go in with us and help us fireproof your home. We come up with evacuation programs and plans for individuals. Uh, we have the Kettering Connection at Town & Country Shopping Center. This is your office this space. This is my okay. office space. Mm -hmm. um, individuals can come from anywhere throughout the Dayton area and come in and ask questions. We are open 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 or 12.30 p.m. Monday through Friday. And there is always someone there who's a professional in the area of senior services you can come in and ask questions, get information. We have the ombudsman's information there uh, from lots of different organizations. Uh, I do home visits to people's homes. Um, many seniors can't get out and they just need someone to tell them what to, where to go. So I can go into the home and work with them. We do advocacy with businesses. I've had businesses who've called me and said, you know, I need help trying to figure out a system for our shoppers. We work with a local um, grocery store that does home visits or does uh, delivery of groceries so that we could make sure that an individual gets those kinds of things. There are a host of things. A lot of the services available to seniors comes from the Area Agency on Aging. Mm -hmm. 
So the State Department of Aging gets money federally, statewide, and county-wise, goes through our Area Agency on Aging. And you can get a free assessment from them, and you just call them at 223-4357. They can send someone out. They will do an assessment of your situation. They will tell you all of the programs that you're eligible for, and they can help you find those services as well. Well, that's good. So we've com combined between area agency and city of Kettering and mm -hmm. other funding programs. It seems like there's a pretty wide range there. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, all right. Let's talk a little bit more. Are there special services through the credit unions that you would like to highlight for, for seniors or uh, services that, uh, that they might need to know about? Well, I would uh, say a couple things about being aware of the situation. Again, I, I just can't stress enough to have a trusted financial partner. If you've been at the same credit union for 20 years, that's the place to go and talk to the, anybody about financial situation. But I might highlight on our CANE, our Collaboration Against Abuse, Neglect, and Exploitation, has a host of members, and you guys can help me if I don't mm -hmm. remember everybody, but I would say um, we have someone from the law, um, What's Legal, it called? Aid. Legal Aid Society. So, you know, if there's if there's a problem then it, and it happens to be something of a legal nature, Senior Resource Connection, mm -hmm. Ombudsman, we have hospitals who are associated with us, mm -hmm. uh, the Montgomery County Sheriff's Department, and Adult Protective Services. Mm -hmm. Many people have a misunderstanding, and I know you've done programs about Adult Protective Services before, but they are there to help the senior stay in mm -hmm. their home if at all possible. So that's another place that you can call. And their number is 225-4906. Um, Arcane Collaboration also has a website, um, and that's www.canemcohio.org. And many of our members are listed there, so you could say, boy, that's maybe who I should talk to. Any of them would be able to refer you to a better source if they're not the right person. Right, excellent. Thank you for providing that information. Is Kane recruiting for additional members at this time? Absolutely, we're okay. always mm -hmm. interested, right? Okay. Yes. When are yes. the meet? When are the meetings? Uh, they are the third, third Wednesday. Wednesday at eight thirty in the morning um, till about ten, and then they um, in the uh, Montgomery County Job and Family Services building, and you just enter through the main doors and let them know that you're there to attend the Kane meeting, and they'll direct you to C2 and 3 or something. Okay. I think that's right. it. Right. Um, and if you want, if, if a person wanted to attend, they could call APS in advance and get more uh, detail about this, couldn't mm -hmm. they? That's at 225-4906. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, Monica, we also have examples of exploitation that happen within the program that you right. operate. Right. Yeah. Would you like to say a little bit about that? Well, I was I was thinking of one in particular, and um, this Im involves a number of points that occur in in a senior's life or in anybody's life. Is that they give authority to mm -hmm. an individual to make those financial decisions or take those financial actions that they may not be able to do. One in particular a number of years ago um, happened and the person uh, gave authority to a family member very innocently but during a time in which they did not have um, much choice. They had mm -hmm. an accident, they were in the hospital, someone and they were going to go to uh, a nursing home for some long-term care services and so they weren't going to be able to manage their finances during that period of time and, and signed over and gave all authority to this family member not understanding that what the door that opened. Um, and so that first part is that, pr that consideration, that, that determination before anything happens of who makes a good um, representative for you and to deal with your finances should not come at a time of crisis. Mm -hmm. more than likely, um, but also so that there can be a conversation about what this looks like. Mm -hmm. um, the second part that happened, and I think you probably know about this, is there was no checks and balances. So there wasn't, um, I am giving you the, the authority to do that, but um, now all hands are off. And mm -hmm. uh, in this situation, the, the 
the person trusted the family member to say everything is fine, everything's being taken care of, everything is fine. You don't need a bank statement. You're fine. We've got everything covered. And unfortunately, over a hundred thousand dollars later, mm -hmm. you have a, a a person calling our office saying, "Do I have the right to look at a bank statement? <laughs> Do I have a right to get my bank statement?" And these are these are unfortunately we see them. I mean, I'm glad that we don't see them as on a daily basis, but they happen. And when they happen, they are unrecoverable funds. Mm -hmm. A person can't earn the, the, that money back and it leaves just a, a, a pit of despair in that person. Most of the time at that point, you know, there are things that they can no longer do because they no longer have any income, mm -hmm. their choices become. And it, then they have to go to court. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes that's really difficult. And so when, um, Bettina, you were talking about some of the educational programs that you were doing um, with credit unions, um, to give them kind of a, a clue or a heads up about what they may see, can you talk a little more about that? Well, sure. I'll, I can give you a few examples of what we end up seeing. Everyone wants <coughs> their privacy around their finances. There's no doubt about it and every financial institution I've ever worked for, everybody in financial institutions that I've ever known have been very careful about sharing information that should only be shared with the owner of the finances. And people depend upon us for that. Um, there is legislation right now in the state um, that is actually go going to hearings, I believe, tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. And um, it would expand elder abuse to include financial situations and it would make financial employees mandatory reporters if they truly saw dangers going on for someone. When you mentioned um, us giving a heads up to, hey, something's different, the biggest thing that we were teaching in these classes to our financial experts were, how are you gonna be aware of financial abuse? What does that look like? And often an, an older individual might start having erratic behavior in their bank account where they come in and start withdrawing large amounts of money all of a sudden. That can be because somebody's asking them to. That can be because they're having memory issues. Uh, but any of those things would give us a freedom to say, this isn't like you. Who, who could we talk to about, is, is this something that's going on? Um, sudden transfers of assets, you know, a car, I wanna sign my car over to my grandson. Those kinds of things could just be questioned a little more. And an, another example of a, what we believe to be an exploitation case that we were able to handle within the credit union was a, an 85-year-old woman who did not have a driver's license, and she applied for a loan for a $40,000 Dodge Ram truck, which she wouldn't possibly be able to get into. Right. And so we questioned, and we said, what's going on? Why would you want this truck? And her grandson happened to be with her at the time, and she said, I want to buy it and give it to him. Now, obviously, she didn't have the money to buy it outright. She was going to be getting a loan, and she's 85 years old, mm -hmm. on a vehicle she would not be driving. When we were able to separate them a little bit, she said, I really don't want to do this. And we were able to deny the loan based upon that reasoning. But those are the little subtle nuances that maybe a family member might see or might not see. Um, that's why we're kind of excited about being able to help and to report uh, for our elders in our mm -hmm. community. Oh, well that is very interesting legislation. We'll have to get in touch with you to follow that and see how that right. progresses. Um, so it, it sounds as if the financial institutions are in support of this and are hoping that it, it, it gives you the tools you need. Absolutely. That's great, that, that's really good. Um, tell us about some of the education that you've conducted with your colleagues. Um, in various different financial institutions. Where all have you gone and what types of institutions have you talked to and how is that going? Well, I tell you what has happened mostly so yeah. far because again, financial institutions are not mandatory reporters. Right. So getting a bank or a credit union to give you a platform uh, is difficult. But there's great online courses okay. so that we can recognize uh, abuse and neglect and exploitation. So uh, we actually developed one mm -hmm. ourselves within our education committee that was taken from lots of different sources. I wanna say there are at least 27 other states who have financial 
individuals as mandatory reporters. So we borrowed some information from them That's and cool. said, why is Ohio behind? We know how many actually probably hit in the billions uh, of money is taking, taken from our seniors. So we've been able to do mainly recognize uh, so credit unions is where we started because obviously that's where I love so we've been able to actually have some one-on-one -on -one, uh, type of education and online education. I bet you have found a very positive response to this and that people are happy to see that they can do something to help. It must be terrible to be in an institution and see something that doesn't look right and not know what to do about it. And and that would be very yeah. frustrating I would think. Yeah. The biggest part about the education was you can call anonymously um, and not to report any dollar amount, but just to say this looks unusual, and you can call Adult Protective Services here in Montgomery County at 225-4906 and say something's not right. Mm -hmm. I, I'm concerned, and they will check up on it. And Bettina, there was also some training about not just only financial exploitation, though that's what we're talking about right now, but also if you start to see, you see a person who comes in and maybe they're bruised Mm -hmm. in, in a way that appears that something happened to them or they're in with somebody um, comes in with them and there seems to be that that situation that's uncomfortable and that they're being pushed to do something they don't want to do that that also is is that part of your training as well it is to, to recognize any type of neglect because it could be self neglect yeah. somebody's just not getting taken care of we had another situation where that very thing happened a, a lady came in who has been a member forever and uh, she trusts her day or personnel and she said I don't want to go back to where she was living and come to find out she wasn't given free access to her food she had had threatening um, both verbally and physical threats and just needed help right then and there we had APS there to help her so she didn't have to go back to the home at all so that kind of education for our financial institutions and really for all kinds of service providers your hairdresser who else is going to know mom you know your hairdresser somebody who takes care of their car they should all be aware of what the services are mm -hmm. available out there and vicki I, I i would take it when some days you don't know what whose door you're knocking on or what you might find or you mm -hmm. do you come across that type of situation where you might be going in to talk with somebody about prescription drug mm -hmm. assistance and come out thinking I, yeah. I need to do something else? Yeah, we r I run into that quite a bit. As a nurse, I'm a mandatory reporter with the state and um, I am in the home and a lot of what I'm seeing is self-neglect. Individuals who can no longer care for themselves who aren't eating, who don't have food in the home. And, and we can sometimes resolve that by getting services, but sometimes they may, mean, they may be mentally unable to live independently anymore. And that's when we have to kind of push the panic button and say something needs to happen. Um, I went to the home of a lady recently who's 90, and she said, I'm being evicted from my home. I've lived here for 30 years. And she had given her power of attorney to the wrong person mm -hmm. in a crisis situation. That person had taken out a home loan in her name against her knowledge and had changed the address that that loan information went to. So she did not know until she had gotten an eviction from the, from the uh, county Came, the, the sheriff came out and said, you're going to be evicted in 30 days. And she's 90 and lived in this home forever. So we were able to get services. But we're seeing it more and more, individuals who are really either s unable to handle their own services and or their own affairs, and they need somebody, but they don't know where to go. And so they sometimes go to people who may have good intentions when it starts, uh, I've had family members say, well, my mom would want me to have a nice car or, you know, the neighbor would want me to, to ba buy me a car because I go to the grocery for her sometimes. So sometimes individuals start out as a good thing and there's nobody ch doing that checks and balances. You know, somebody at that institution that made out that loan should have 
really questioned why in 80, at the time the loan was taken out, 85-year-old woman would be taking out a huge second mortgage mm -hmm. and not be there personally. So there are lots of things that we see in the home that we will work with Adult Protective Services or the area agency to resolve those issues. The biggest problem we have is fear of embarrassment. Mm -hmm. So many seniors are embarrassed to say, I can no longer do this for myself. The fear is Adult Protective Services is gonna come in and rip them away from their home, just like they see on TV with children's services. Somebody shows up, takes a child out of the home, that's not how Adult Protective Services works. They are there to support the senior in whatever they want. And sometimes that means allowing a senior to make some bad choices. Um, and sometimes that's a hard part for me as a nurse because we want to fix things. And sometimes people don't want the help or to be fixed. Mm -hmm. And so um, we really have to measure out the needs of the individual and helping them understand that, you know, it is embarrassing to admit that your child abused you or your niece or nephew stole hundreds of thousands of dollars from you or you gave a power of attorney to a, fam to a neighbor that you didn't know that well. It's embarrassing to admit that. And so that's where a lot of people don't get the help that they need. And we want to get rid of that embarrassment get rid of that stigma that talking about it is shameful mm -hmm. because we can only fix what we know about. I'm so glad you made that point because in your initial example there was crisis, there mm -hmm. was eviction, you know the wolf is at the door mm -hmm. kind of thing and too often it is those crisis situations that bring the problem to the forefront mm -hmm. and then it's oftentimes too late as Monica mentioned to recover in mm -hmm. that in that situation so you know encourage viewers that are watching this program if you have a suspicion that something is wrong mm -hmm. with somebody or about somebody or yourself with your relative it's better to reach out and get some protection and there are a lot of entities out there we've mentioned APS a couple of times we've mentioned your own financial institution if you live in Kettering you can talk to mm -hmm. Vicki you know you can call our office there are lots of places where confidential um, checks and balances can can be set in motion mm -hmm. to prevent something from going much further than it should have I so. like the fact that you can make an anonymous referral to Adult Protective Services. Yes. I, and if you're afraid that there's repercussions, an anonymous referral still gets help, but doesn't, you're not going to be mentioned. Right, right. Mm -hmm. it certainly, they, they certainly can be anonymous, and with every other entity we've mentioned, they can also remain confidential. Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone in this, in this uh, arena of Kane is protecting confidentiality as well but yes the fact that it's an anonymous <coughs> report is 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 very very significant do you have some people that are afraid to talk to you when you approach them I know <laughs> <laughs> we do have people who will will uh, a, a family member may have sent them to me or or a ch one of their children called me and said you need to go see my mother and when I approach the individual uh, they will say, well, I don't know why they told you that. I don't know why they think I need help. And, you know, we work with individuals to say, you know, if, if you don't want our services, we are not going to force them right. on you. Right. Just because I work with the police department doesn't mean that I can come in and, and overrule what you want. Right. So we're left, we just let individuals know we're here to help and you can utilize our services. You know, I, I make tons of recommendations and out of a list of 15 things I may recommend to somebody, they may only want three of them. Well, we've helped their, their lives in three ways and that's very beneficial to them. It may not be everything that I may think they need, but as long as they get what they want, you know, just because an older person is older, doesn't mean they're not an adult. Right, Doesn't, absolutely. But it also means what you're doing is allowing them to build trust with yes. you. 
So out of 15, I feel confident that these might be something I can do. Oh, look, they were successful. Mm -hmm. Now I might be able to, and it's important, they don't know you. So trust, mm -hmm. building that trust with you and, and the services that you would provide, and that you might even come back and talk with them about the other things that you, mm -hmm. that you recommended that could also improve their lives at staying in their homes. People will come to the Kettering Connection and sometimes they're just there to get coffee and, and say hello. And they may come in 15 times before they have the, um, the ability to say, can I talk to you? And, and we do that. Or uh, they may come for Medicare counseling and trust that I'm giving them good Medicare counseling and then say, I might think about talking to her about something else. So building that relationship over a long period of time and letting people know that we are here when you need us. We're not going to force ourselves on you, but we're here and we're available. That's great. Uh, you've, you've mentioned a lot about a wide range of services from both of you all tonight, which is very, very helpful. Um, we touched just once briefly about volunteers, and you mentioned mm -hmm. the, the high school students that were, I think, shoveling snow in this mm -hmm. particular season. Can you say any more about the volunteer networks that might be available uh, in case there are individuals viewing who might want to offer some kind of mm -hmm. assistance? Um, a lot of cities have a volunteer department. We have a volunteer department. We have hundreds of volunteers, thousands actually, of volunteers in the city. And we save, our volunteers save millions of dollars in tax mm -hmm. dollars by doing some of those services. All of my administrative support individuals are volunteers. So I am blessed that way. And you're, you have volunteer ombudsmen who work in, this, in, the, in the nursing homes and assisted livings. There are lots, a whole host of ways to, so talk to your city or your county government to see if there are ways. Organizations, I'm a Red Cross volunteer as a nurse. The Red Cross needs volunteers. There are lots of areas that individuals can come and feel, and a lot of seniors just want to feel supported. They want to feel like they're doing something. And when they retire, they kind of go, geez, I feel like I'm not really making any contributions and volunteering is a great way to do that. So contact your government agencies, organizations, uh, not-for-profits that may need, you know, even if it's stuffing a newsletter, that's a big deal it for is. a lot of organizations. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. It is. It's a lot to get that out. Uh, most of our time is flying by. I mm -hmm. want to give you all each a couple of minutes for closing remarks. Give us phone numbers you want us to have so that individuals who may not have gotten it earlier can grab their pen or pencil and a mm -hmm. piece of paper. So I'll start with you, Bettina, please. Absolutely. Well, I had mentioned that Day Air exists to improve their members' financial well-being. Yes. Uh, and we do that throughout the community. Um, me being a part of Kane has actually just brought that to the forefront. We will have members that get in these situations, so it has allowed us to deal with them um, in a more professional way and to find all the right resources for them. So I feel very confident going forward that our financial institution will be out front when the mm -hmm. legislation goes through. Secondly, I just wanted to mention Kane again, the collaboration against uh, uh, abuse, neglect, and exploitation. Um, there's another resource for you. So we would love for you to take a look at that website. You will see members of Kane that could be a resource for you and a volunteer opportunity. So that's kanemcohio.org. Uh, and Adult Protective Services can put you in touch with Kane at 225-4906. Lovely. Thank you very much. And to the viewers this evening, if any of you missed those numbers, we have them right here. So <laughs> if you if you want to call the Ombudsman's office, we'll also help support giving out those numbers. And Vicki, what would you like to say about in sum about your um, your services? Uh, I would just like everybody to, to know that they should reach out to someone if they have an issue. Uh, whether it be myself with the City of Kettering, your office, Adult Protective Services, we are supporti here to support each other. And so I would like to make that known. Uh, my contact information is 296-3356. That is my direct line. The Kettering Connection at Town & Country Shopping Center, again, is open 830 to 1230, Monday through Friday. And that number is 296 3300. 
3300. Um, yes. Very and good. if you would con want to contact our Senior Center or Transportation Program, that number is 296-2480. Well, we have certainly been rattling off a lot of numbers <laughs> tonight, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> which is an indication, I think, of how many services there really are out mm -hmm. there available and people that are wanting to help. So before our time is completely gone, I want to thank all of you mm -hmm. for, uh, for the work that you do and for coming on the program tonight, answering questions and uh, helping to protect our seniors and provide them community services. Thank you very much. And I'd like to thank the viewers tonight for watching the program. Thank you.